how do I pick up a game piece in Reefscape? The scoring elements in Reefscape are wildly different from each other. One of them is a large kickball-like game piece called Algae, and another is a much smaller game piece made out of PVC called Coral. Algae is fairly large, pretty compliant, and has a very interesting textured surface which may provide some grip while acquiring it. Algae is fairly bouncy, so teams may find that when they're acquiring from the ground, they may have a tendency to roll away. Conversely, coral is much smaller, much firmer, and depending on which orientation you approach it, could have a very different shape. So for this year's game challenge, algae can be found on either the reef or the ground, and coral can be found either in the loading station or on the ground. Depending on where your team decides to get its game piece from, that may define how you design your manipulator. Teams when looking at ways of manipulating algae might be able to find inspiration from previous year's games in which we've had more spherical-like game objects. Parallels can be drawn between the 2019 Deep Space game and maybe even 2004 where we also had large kickball-like game objects. In Reefscape, teams will have to determine whether they want to handle one game piece or the other, or even both. Because the differences in both the size, shape, and squishiness of the game pieces, it may be pretty challenging to be able to manipulate both of them at the same time. With two different types of game pieces, teams may find that they're able to make one mechanism that works for both of them, or they may find they have to build a different mechanism for either of them. So there are many different types of intakes we've seen in FRC, many of which are roller-based intakes. Roller-based intakes revolve spinning a wheel, roller, or tube to create a grip between a game piece and usually the floor or another roller. So rollers are really great because they allow you to just touch a game piece and usually it pulls it towards the robot. Now this is really advantageous because it means you don't have to be perfectly aligned on a game piece to be able to pull it in towards you. Other systems like gripper claws may often allow you to grab game pieces in a number of different shapes and sizes, but often require a little bit more precision to align and grab correctly. In FRC, there's a saying called touch it, own it. And by that, we mean when you touch a game piece, your robot should be able to quickly acquire it without a whole lot of hassle. Generally, this means that your roller speed needs to be one and a half to two times faster than your robot's drag speed. This allows you to be backing away from the game piece while still being able to acquire it through your roller. When designing your intake, you may want to consider the power source for your intake. This can be pneumatics, springs, or even a motor. While putting a motor on the end of your intake might be easy, you might want to consider other power transmission techniques to move the motor away and lower the mass. There are many different types of roller-based materials that you can use on an intake. For example, compliant wheels are great for irregular shaped objects and often hard game pieces where there's not a whole lot of flexibility in the game piece. By putting compliance in your mechanism, it allows you to contort and sometimes be quite a bit off angle and still be able to acquire the game piece. For more compliant game pieces, you might consider a harder, more firm wheel because it doesn't need to compress. So this is an example of a roller-based claw. It features three inch compliant wheels, some elastic tubing, and a set of gears to change the direction so that one side spins the opposite direction of the first side. This is pretty useful because it allows you to either get a game piece in between the rollers and then expand to contort to the game piece, as well as the elastic maintains pressure on a game piece so that when you turn the rollers off, the game piece is held firm. As you can see, we've moved the motor to the back of this mechanism and are powering the rollers through these belts. Now, whether you use a roller-based mechanism in this orientation to pull things with a set of rollers on top of another set of rollers, or if you use a mechanism like this in a side-by-side -side orientation, the game piece still should pass between the two roller sets and be acquired inside. Due to the unique nature of the coral, teams might want to take a look at this year's FTC game, Into the Deep, for different ways of acquiring and holding onto, as well as reorienting a game piece that's longer than it is wide and tall. As we were talking about earlier, having some amount of compliance while working with a hard game object is usually preferable. In this case, you can see that the game piece pushes the rubber out of the way and the wheel is able to flex around the game piece. 
This helps with grip and traction. A reason you would want to use a firmer kind of wheel is oftentimes those generally don't squish as much and allow a firmer hold over what you have. So with our roller intake, you want to touch the game piece between the spinning wheels. As we can see with a mechanism like this, it moves very quickly, is able to acquire coral through the middle between the two arms and hold it there very firmly. When using a style like this, teams can take a look at the different amount of tension they want to put in a system like this. And it's oftentimes pretty easy to make this something that's adjustable, so you can tune it in to be just the way you like it. Other things teams can want to consider with a mechanism like this is potentially changing the wheel size to be bigger or smaller, harder rubber or softer rubber, and being able to play with some of those different parameters to tune in the game piece acquisition process. With some of the compliance both in the wheel and in the swing arms, an intake like this might be usable for both the algae and the coral. In many cases, teams may find that they can use their intake also as their scoring device. Being able to spit the wheels out will often allow the game piece to eject from the robot in a scoring manner. You can also consider just opening and closing your intake to be able to release and score a game piece. This is just one implementation that we've seen is able to acquire both the coral and the algae. There are a lot of different other great designs such as using horizontal rollers, grippers, and other passive-based systems for acquiring and scoring the game piece. There are a ton of really great resources online about different ways you can tackle intakes, especially for this year's game, Reefscape. Before designing your intake, be sure to focus on the strategy between which type of game piece you'd like to manipulate and how many at the same time. And that's how you pick up game pieces in Reefscape.